singer, actress, and DJ Lauren Mayhew. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm looking forward to chatting about your music, your acting career, and everything like that. For sure. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. as a person what makes you you um I'd say people uh would say the things that make me me uh I'm pretty adventurous and outgoing um I love trying new things I love going new places and I love people so um I like meeting people from all walks of life even when I'm traveling sometimes you know you meet a person that you never see again but just that five right. minutes that you meet them or interact with them can stay with you or change something about how you look at the world so i think that um that's always like a really cool way to to look at things i love that that's i kind of i do that as well like i love interacting with new, meeting new people um one of my goals is if i can meet a new person and make them smile or you know if they're having a bad day i always try to think about that so i love that you never know how much people actually need that so. exactly exactly we're it is hard right now out there so we need the world needs more people like that <laughs> true Okay, um, so I would love to know who or what influenced your decision to pursue music? I know you've been in the industry for a while now, and I would love to hear about your journey into that. So, you know, there wasn't like one person necessarily from when I was a kid that it super encouraged me. I think something inside me, I always knew that I wanted to perform and that I wanted to sing. I mean, my mom will tell me stories about when I was a little girl, or I'd be in an elevator or something and I'd turn to a stranger and be like, hi, wanna hear me sing? And before they even could respond, I would just bust out in a song. So they really didn't have a choice. Uh, yeah, but um, I am very lucky though, speaking about my parents, um, they were incredibly, incredibly supportive and I definitely wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for them. Um, it wasn't anything that they by any means uh, would have pushed me into or would have thought for me to do. Um, my dad's a doctor, my mom's a nurse. Um, you know, I think <laughs> anything, maybe we're a little bit wary about the entertainment yeah. industry, but I think because I was so passionate about it and so excited about it that they're like, all right, well, this is what you want to do. As long as you get good grades, we'll treat this like soccer practice or like basketball practice or whatever. Right. That's awesome. I, yeah. It's funny you say that about the elevator story. My daughter is the exact same way. <laughs> Our, she's only five, yeah. already running around the house, writing her own songs and singing for anyone that will listen. And I love mm -hmm. seeing that. So awesome. I love that so much. That is so cute. Yeah. Um, okay. So kind of going, bouncing kind of back to that, like your journey into the music industry. So you said your parents are always supportive. What yes. was kind of like your first um, experience with like in the, in the industry? So um, I actually started off, well, I guess I kind of started acting and singing at the time, same time. Okay. I was in musical theater first when I was a kid. Wow. And I booked a Broadway musical when I was 10. But at the same time, um, I booked a TV show called The Reppies um, <laughs> that was a kid's show that was on PBS. Okay. And um, at the time, the, sh the role that I booked was actually for um, Showboat the musical. And I don't know if you've ever seen that musical, but the, the role for the young girl is actually like not that big of a role. Okay. And the, the role in the TV show um, was like the main character. And it also shot in my hometown as opposed to in New York. That's so amazing. exactly. So we kind of made the decision based on those two things. And I ended up, um, you know, going that direction. But it was awesome because even from that age, uh, the TV show incorporated a lot of music. So I actually got to sing oh within the TV show. And then from there, I ended up leaving um, uh, the show and I was on a soap opera called Guiding Light for about three okay. years. Wow. And then that's when I got signed to Epic Sony and I was in a girl band um, called PYT. And we opened up for Britney and Sync, Destiny's Child, 98 Degrees, toured all over the place. Um, it was a crazy experience, but a lot of fun. How old were you when that started I'm sorry yeah I was like 12 to 17 or 18 and opening up for those acts I can only yeah. imagine like just the insanity and amazing oh, crazy <laughs> like 50,000 person arenas and it was very trippy for a 13 year old to you know go and do that and perform for that many people and then to come back to school because my parents kept us um or kept me enrolled in yeah. regular school I had a tutor when I was gone but when I was in Tampa I went to yeah. a private prep school wow. and you know, coming back to regular school and just being a normal kid you know yeah. um so I basically no, lived the idea yeah, of real life, 
Yeah, like a real life Hannah Montana life or something. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Mm-hmm. I bet your childhood was not uh, boring by any means. <laughs> Constantly Definitely going. Not boring. Definitely not boring. <laughs> Incredible. I love that so much. Um, but funny, so I will get more into your acting career later. I have a couple of questions on that too. Um, but the, I remember that actually the first time I ever seen you on screen was in the movie Raise Your Voice. Yeah. And that was one of my favorite movies, like, of all time. I actually just rewatched it a couple of weeks ago, which is funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was your experience like on set with that movie? I had such an amazing time. I mean, it was yeah. a great movie to be a part of because there were so many young, um, you know, kid actors and young adult yeah. actors that were so talented and have gone on to do mm-hmm. such amazing things. And so working with them was a dream. And we also just had so much fun offset. Like it was just such a happy right. set to be on. Um, it was also cool getting to work with Hillary. It was funny actually, yeah. um, you know, when, in my screen test, I came and I met her and I'm thinking like, oh wow, this is gonna be so cool to meet Hillary Duff. And right. she was like, oh my God, it's so good to meet you. She's like, I love PYT. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, so apparently she had seen my band yeah. perform um, with Destiny's Child in Texas, where she's originally from, and knew my band and like had been a fan of our music. So I was like, Lord, when that happened, that was like an unexpected turn of events. I you know, didn't know was going to happen. So um, I'm sure that didn't hurt, if, you know, if anything, right. um, for her giving me that vote. Um, so I'm definitely grateful to her for that. That's incredible. I mean, I so many amazing actors and actresses from that movie. And I mean, music is a massive part of my life as well. So I can only imagine like a movie about like a music life and a, and a time like that, a storyline like that. I just love, always loved that storyline. Yeah, um, no, it is. And everyone did an incredible job. So um, that, yeah, that's really awesome to hear about that. I love that. Uh, okay, so I would love to know what drew you to become a DJ to like, kind of into like the club music EDM world. What drew you to that? So yeah, you know, um, when I left PYT, you know, the music I was doing there was, we were kind of like a TLC or In Vogue or whatever, if you will, kind of like a pop urban um, R&B, so different than the stuff that I do now. Um, When I first moved to LA and started working on music on my own and sort of writing my own music, I was actually doing a lot of um, pop rock and alternative like rock music and stuff, which is also very different than, but just another influence of something that I loved. And I, I had this opportunity to work with an amazing band, but um, kind of shortly after that, the sound started merging to kind of like more electronic still with the band, but more electronic in that scene. And then I had actually had the opportunity to go study abroad in college. I was, I went to UCLA and when I was studying abroad in Spain, I remember going to these nightclubs and hearing EDM and dance music for the first time and yeah. just falling in love. And I knew that that was my jam. That's so awesome. um, I love, I love it. I love EDM. I love da- going to the club and dance, like just dancing to it. It's just, you just feel it and feel like it just courses through your body and you just like can feel inside of music. I don't know if that makes sense. For anyway. sure. No, it does. It definitely <laughs> does. So I came back uh, from Europe and started writing music with other producers and with other DJs and things like that. And then started touring, had the opportunity to actually do some really cool tours with different DJs in the Netherlands. And I started thinking to myself, I was like, man, you know, I've done the band thing. I've done, you know, the singer with the DJ thing, but I'm always reliant on someone else to be able to perform with me. So that's kind of how the DJing idea was born. I was like, man, I need to learn how to DJ so I can just be like self-sufficient and do this on my own. So that's kind of how it started. But then once I started going down that rabbit hole, I realized how much I really loved it and how much it was just such another amazing, unique expression, um, you know, within my music that I would be able to kind of utilize in my tool belt. So um, I'm so, I mean, man, I wish I had done it sooner, but better, better soon or better late than never. That was, that's amazing. I really love that. Like, um, I mean, because you don't see, as many female DJs in the world or in, in EDM artists and stuff like that. And I, so I love finding them and also especially good ones as well. I mean, like your music is just incredible. I've had the chance to listen through and um, I can definitely picture that in like, you know, a f- just the most amazing club setting and just dancing to it. It's just great. I just, I love it. And such an amazing, unique sound. So um, definitely a fan of that. <laughs> You. Um, okay, so can you describe your writing process when you're approaching like a new single or an album? Like what inspires your music and your writing? So it's interesting. I mean, typically I prefer, I really like writing to tracks that DJs send to me because that music kind of speaks to me. And then I usually yeah. kind of A, listen to the music itself and see like what 
kind of thoughts that kind of evokes in terms of a theme or whatever, but it definitely my, you know, what's going on in my world or my life at that time definitely also heavily affects it. Okay. Um, sometimes it works out that the song or the, the top line that I write um, to a certain track ends up not being the track that's used. And I end up, you know, having that top line available and send it to another DJ and he creates something or she creates yeah. something totally different um, that than what I had even had originally envisioned. So that's really kind of fun. And I love that collaborative aspect. Um, and then from that kind of point, it's a back and forth really of, you know, tweaking this, tweaking that, like, oh, should we change this first? Like, are we happy with that? Um, should we add ad libs here? What do we think about this effect? And, um, you know, that's something, especially in dance music that I think is really important because that, you know, if you do a vocal chop or if you do like that really changes the overall yes. vibe and energy of the song. So I think that that's almost just as important as the lyrics itself in a way. I agree. I, that's really cool. I love hearing everyone's process is so different with how mm -hmm. they, you know, approach the music. Mm -hmm. Some people have like, oh, I have to do this, this, and this, like, you know, routine to even get into the writing mode. So I just love right. hearing everyone's unique, um, unique process into that. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so not only do you have an exciting and thriving music career, but kind of what we mentioned earlier, you have also been a part of the TV and film industry. Um, tell us about your most recent project. I heard that you uh, have, what is your character's name on Trollstopia? Yeah, so I have a couple of really exciting things that have just happened. One, yes, Trollstopia. Um, I, it's on Hulu and Peacock TV and actually just released a couple days ago that season two is greenlit. So that's coming out um, March 18th, uh, which is very, very soon. Um, but the first season came out this past year, uh, November 19th of 2020. And I play Val Thundershock. I'm the queen of the rock and roll trolls. And she's I love so that. <laughs> she's so cute. She's purple. She has a crop top. She has pigtails with little skull and crossbone barrettes. She's adorable. That's and perfect. once again, it's amazing because I get to not only use my acting chops, but also <laughs> sing in it as well. So that's a lot of fun. Right. That's awesome. I love that so much. I used to imagine. Yeah. What is it like being a voice actor? Is that is that your first or for an animated like series? Is that your first one, or have you done like other voice acting jobs before? I actually my first uh, my first couple forays into animation were one I did this uh, animated series through Ashton Kutcher's production company, and it was called The Blah Girls. It was kind of like a female version of South Park, if you will. Oh, um, <laughs> actually, I've heard of that. Okay. It was really funny. Um, so it was just airing, it had a really big online following. They almost ended up doing a deal with MTV and then it didn't end up working out, which was a bummer. <laughs> but that was such a blast to be able to work on as well. And then I've actually done a lot of big video games. So I'm in um, wow, that's Red awesome. Dead Redemption and Uncharted 4 and um, uh, I was Harley Quinn in one of the WB video games. So um, those were kind of my first, I guess, things that I did in, in uh, wow. voiceover animation. Well, that is really exciting. Yeah. It's, you have kind of your hands in everything and like the entertainment industry, which is I, I well-rounded. I just think feel like not doing the same thing all the time would just keep life just interesting and exciting. So it definitely really does. And I feel like they kind of work together and blend together as well. Like yes. one kind of, kind of feed off the other. Like there's been so many times where I've booked a TV show or a film. And if it's something that I do kind of on a more ongoing basis, I've been yeah. able to you know, tell the director, oh, I do music too. And I've licensed songs to the TV show that I'm in yeah. or vice versa. So that's been a really cool thing to be kind of, to yeah. be able to blend the different aspects that I'm doing in my world. I do have one thing that just uh, happened recently. I just found yeah. out last week. Um, I booked a really awesome guest star role on a CBS show called FBI Most Wanted, um, which is really cool. What? Yeah, so I'm pumped. That's um, yeah, so I'll start shooting that next week. And uh, I can't say anything oh my about my character or right. anything yet, but um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited to be a part of the show. Well, congratulations. That is super exciting. And I'll be, I love like crime shows and everything like that. So make sure to watch that specifically. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so exciting. When do you, yeah. you know, when you begin uh, filming or you're not allowed to say any of that yet? Or I start filming next week. Um, I actually don't know the air date of my episode yet. I think that it actually says in all the contracts that just got sent over, but I haven't even had a, <laughs> had a friend visiting me from out of town. So we actually, um, I, we snuck in a quick beach trip 
And I just dropped her off at the airport right before coming here and being able to talk to you. So I have an onslaught of emails um, after this yeah. that I have to attend to. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know exactly what, all, what that's like. So I won't keep you for too much longer. <laughs> um so one of the questions another question i have uh what so once covid is kind of a thing of the past and we're able to like be all together and go to shows and like do tours and stuff do you have any like desire to tour or have any plans for that or any ideals ideal for, tour? Sure. for sure 100 oh, percent um good. i mean last year i got to do so much uh you know i had been doing a residency in new york for tau group i was playing at lavo marquee which are the two biggest nightclubs there yeah and then i appeared like a couple months before covid a um, residency ongoing at Park MGM in Vegas, um, oh, which oh was so much fun. Oh, I know, and I was starting to, um, I had already been doing their nightclub, which is yeah. called On the Record, but yeah. I was start, uh, starting, or was supposed to be starting um, their pool uh, their pool party um, on Saturdays. And literally yeah. that first date was in March. And that was right when every, you know, when the world stopped. <laughs> so, um, no. I'm really excited to get back. This year, I would really love, I mean, I don't know how, if it's if it's gonna happen this year or not, I mean fingers yeah. crossed. But, um, if festivals come back, that is really yes. what I'd love to focus on is being able to do some amazing uh, dance music festivals. But I don't know if that's a thing that will happen right soon. So oh, okay. <laughs> I've never been to a fest yet. It's still on my bucket list um, to go to a festival. But I just seeing all the videos and just how much fun and just amazing that they look. I can only imagine what it would be like to play one. So. Oh. I'm mean, absolutely incredible. Yes, the energy and yes, uh, I love also too that there's you know some music for everyone. So whether you're into yes. you know, deep house or whether you're into yes. like you know big room or progressive or whatever you're into, there's a stage for that. You know, yes. <laughs> so that's, you're able to switch it up and uh, to be able to uh, you know get all of your musical tastes right. um, initiated. If you will. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, that's that's incredible. I really hope that yes, I really hope that in the most safe ways possible that the shows and everything can come back sooner than later but you know um i miss man i just miss going to live shows and just feeling the music in the room as it's happening and not uh, the virtual shows are amazing and it's just wonderful yeah. we can still see you know the artists and um still do that but there's just nothing like being in the room i totally it. agree i've been doing so a I've been lucky that I've been able to do actually a lot of virtual uh, live stream DJ sets that have been sponsored by brands, which has oh been a good to give back to my fans yeah. because they've allowed me to do contests where all my fans can win things. And then I announce them live on the stream and then send it to them. So that's yeah. been really cool. I actually just did one yesterday uh, for a jewelry brand called Uzi Life. And they do like jewelry and hats and accessories and bags. And um, a bunch of people won some really cool backpacks and uh, wow. clutches. So that was cool. That's really exciting. Yeah. I love that. Um, oh, wait, didn't you also play for the Super Bowl this year? Did I see that? Yeah, yeah, not at the actual Super Bowl. Oh, I, although when I was much younger, I did actually perform at the actual Super Bowl when I was in my band PYT. We opened up with Sting and Sticks um, at the pregame, which was pretty amazing. Um, so this was not as cool as that by any means. Um, but. <laughs> but I did uh, a Super Bowl party. Yeah, yeah. I did a Super Bowl party on Friday, which is just, you know, days before the Super Bowl. So right. that was also really fun. That that would just be amazing. I've never been to a Super Bowl, so being going to one twice, I can just that's pretty oh, so sorry. I just kicked my desk out to cut that part out. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um that's that's amazing. I love I love hearing about all about everything that you're up to and um just the exciting life that you live and <laughs> everything like that. So thank you again so much for sitting down with me. I do yeah. have one more question for you. We'll leave the fans and, and the audience awesome. with this one. Um, can you give us one random fact about you that maybe not many people know? Yes. <laughs> so I'll give you a just like fun, like little fun facts. Okay. One is that uh, I cannot whistle like at all. Like it's, it's sad. Like I try. And so for a singer, you would think that a singer would probably be able to like, they go hand in hand. Right. They do not, I assure you. <laughs> and I may be the world's worst whistler. Oh, so that's one. Oh. And then just another <laughs> Yeah, it, it's such a weird fact, but totally true. And then the other thing is that my favorite dessert since I was a little girl is mint chocolate chip ice cream. Has to be the green kind yes. from Baskin Robbins in a waffle cone, rainbow sprinkles. Oh, That's my I do love mint chocolate chip ice cream. I've not had Baskin Robbins, so I might have to go try that because that's also one of my favorite ice creams. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Like, I 
sure it's just the food coloring that makes it green, but I don't know. To me, I'm like, it's got to be the green kind. It's it, no, totally different. I've had like the white mint chocolate chip. It just does not like the mint. Oh. It's almost like pe peppermint. Pepperminty, it's yes. As opposed, different yes, than yes, like yes. the I agree with green that. mint. I don't know what mm -hmm. it is. I yeah, yeah, I don't know either. So, oh my goodness. I but yes. Yeah, so now I want. Now I need to go get some after after this conversation. <laughs>